Hi Art Beaters, Becky here and I've got a brand new video for you today. I'm going to be showing you how to make our Mojave Rain necklace. This necklace features a tubular peony stitch rope and some fun chain fringe on a crescent pendant for a lovely boho look. I'm going to be showing you how to do the tubular peony stitch and how to attach the chain to the crescent pendant and use those jump rings and end caps in the necklace. So let's take a look and get started. You can find full text instructions and a supplies list for this necklace on our website, artbeads.com. To make our Mojave Ray necklace, you're going to need some beading thread. I'm using Toho 1G thread in a color that matches my seed beads. You're going to need a beading needle. I like to use size 12 or size 10. You're also going to need um, some chain to use for your fringe. I've got about two feet of this round disc chain. You're also going to need 11 aught seed beads. I'm using an Art Beads Designer seed bead blend featuring Toho seed beads. I did want to mention that if you are using our Art Beads Designer seed bead blend tubes for this project, you will need two tubes of seed beads. These tubes are about 17 grams in weight. So plan for 34 grams of seed beads and you should have plenty to make uh, this rope the length you want. You'll also need some end caps. These are tear cast end caps and they're about eight millimeter in size. And you're going to be gluing these um, onto the ends of your tubular peony stitch rope that you're going to make. You're also going to need a lovely crescent pendant like this one. It has 15 rings at the bottom for attaching your chain fringe. You'll also need two 12 millimeter jump rings and you'll also need 15 smaller jump rings. These are 4.6 millimeter in size and these are for attaching your chain fringe to your crescent pendant. So let's get started. So in this tubular peyote stitch, there are six beads in each row. So to start the tubular peyote stitch, we're going to want to string on the first two rows of beads. So I'm actually going to add 12 seed beads to my thread. One, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So let's make sure we have exactly 12, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. All right, we've got those 12 seed beads on the thread, and I'm going to bring them down almost to the end of the thread, but I'm going to leave a tail long enough that I can weave back in uh, to my tubular peyote stitch rope once I have it all done. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back through all of those beads from the beginning to form a ring of seed beads. I'm going to make sure my ring is nice and tight. I'm going to tie that tail in a knot with my working thread. There we go. Now we have a nice ring of 12 seed beads. And now, to start the stitch, I'm going to bring my thread through the next seed bead over uh, to the side of the knot. So we're not starting this stitch from the knot because that would get everything all out of whack. Now we're ready to really start the stitch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up a seed bead. And just like peyote stitch, I'm going to skip over that next seed bead over in the ring and go through the third seed bead in the ring. So I'm going to do the same thing again. Pick up a seed bead, skip over that next seed bead, and go through the seed bead after that. You're just going to keep doing that for the rest of this row. Pick up a seed bead, skip over the next seed bead, go through the seed bead after that. 
can kind of see my uh, third row starting to stagger up. Pick up a bead, skip over the next seed bead over, go through the seed bead after that. Again, pick up a bead, skip over the next seed bead after your thread, go through the seed bead after that. Pick up a bead, go through, skip over the next seed bead after your thread, and go through the seed bead after that. Now I'm back at the beginning of uh, my row and I'm going to need to step up from here to add the next row. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my needle through that first seed bead I added to this row. And you can tell it's the first seed bead of the previous row of this row because um, it's kind of staggered up from the rest of the beads. So I've stepped up, now I'm ready to start my next row. Again, the color pattern is random, so it doesn't matter what colors you pick up for this. So I picked up a bead and I'm going to go through that next bead over in the row. And I'm skipping over the lower bead in the previous row. Pick up a bead, go through the next bead in the row, skipping over that bottom bead. As you add more rows, this tube will start to form up nicely. Uh, some people like to roll up a little post-it note and um, bring it through the center of the tube just to help the rope keep its shape until you have enough rows. Um, that's certainly something you can do if, if uh, the shape is something you want to keep from the very beginning. Pick up a bead, go through the next bead in the row, skipping over that bead in the bottom row. Now I'm almost ready to step up. So I'm going to add a bead, go through that next bead, and then step up through the first bead that we added to this row. you can kind of pull it just to get the rope started and you can see the rope that is starting to uh, retain its shape. So now we're ready to add the next row. So you just keep going like this. Pick up a bead, skip over a bead, and go through the next bead in the row. Pick up a bead, skip over a bead, go through the next bead in the row. Pick up a bead, skip over a bead, go through the next bead over in the row. Pick up a bead, skip over a bead, go through the next bead in the row. Pick up a bead, skip over a bead, go through the next bead over in the row. Pick up a bead, skip over a bead, go through the next bead over in the row, and we are ready uh, to step up through the first bead in this row. So you can see I'm going through two beads to step up. So you can go through one bead and then step up or go through both beads if, uh, if your needle allows, if your movement allows. So you can see that tube starting to form up. You just uh, keep going with that until you have about 16 and a half inches or the desired length uh, for your necklace. Um, this one is about 16 and a half inches and keep in mind that your, your clasp and end caps are going to add um, some length as well. 
I wanted to show you also what I do um, if I need to add thread, if I'm running out of thread length on the thread I'm working with. Um, you can totally add thread if your thread um, becomes too short, but make sure that you uh, stop and uh, finish your thread before it gets too short, otherwise it's going to be hard to, um, to secure it. So uh, once you only have, let's say um, if you only have like about this much thread, left, you're going to want to uh, start to secure it into your peyote stitch rope um, and then add a new one. So to do that is really easy. Um, all you want to do is kind of weave back in to your beads and loop your thread around um, a bunch of times as you weave back in and that's going to secure your thread. So I'm just kind of looping back and forth uh, in the weave of the beads and you'll feel it as you go that you're probably going to catch uh, some threads that are already in the weave and that's exactly what you want to do. You're looping around a bunch of times to catch the threads that are already there to secure this thread in place. And make sure to follow the kind of follow the weave path so you don't have like uh, threads, threads kind of popping up over beads or anything like that. So just kind of do that a few times, enough where it feels really secure, like it's not going to unravel. And then once you've got it uh, kind of where you want it, then you can trim that thread really close to the rope and um, it won't show up. So I've got it uh, woven in and secured, so I'm gonna trim it. And um, nice, really close pliers are, are great for this. And I'm gonna trim it right there. And then uh, my end is finished. So this is a great technique to know for adding in new thread if your thread runs too short. This is also what you're gonna do when your rope is the length you want it and you're finishing off the threads. And you're gonna do that with the tail as well. So make sure to leave the tail long enough to weave back into the rope so you can finish off that end as well. Once your rope is the desired length, you're gonna to want to glue your tiara cast uh, end caps um, onto the ends of your, um, of your rope. And you can kind of push those seed beads in there and we are using um, glue to secure them. So the glue we like to use is five minute epoxy adhesive. And this glue comes in two parts. So what you're gonna do is you're going to get like a postcard or a business card or a paper plate and squeeze out each part in equal amounts and then mix it with a toothpick or a paper clip um, until um, it starts getting kind of tacky. And that will happen pretty quickly with the five minute epoxy. Then you'll take that glue and swab it into the inside of your cap and then attach the cap to the end of your um, peyote stitch rope. And you're gonna do that on both ends. And um, it'll dry in five minutes and be pretty secure, but you're gonna wanna let it cure for 24 hours. Um, and then it'll really be bonded to the rope. While your ends are drying, uh, that might be a good time to start adding your chain fringe to your crescent pendant. So to do that, I'm going to want uh, to cut five disc lengths of chain um, for each little fringe. And what's important about this is you're going to be using that oval ring in the chain to attach uh, your chain to the crescent pendant. So you're going to want to cut away that first um, disc away from that oval so you can easily attach your chain to the to the pendant. So I've got that cut away and then I'm gonna do one, two, three, four, five. I want five lengths of chain and we'll cut that cut that link. There we go. So you're going to want to cut 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 lengths of chain that are five discs long with an oval ring at the top. 
Okay, I've got 15 chain lengths cut, five disc lengths each, and now I'm going to attach them to these rings with a jump ring for each, and you're gonna be using chain nose pliers to do that. So I'm gonna be using my smaller jump rings, my 4.6 millimeter jump rings, and I'm going to open the jump ring. I'm gonna attach that chain length with the oval link at the top, and then I'm going to put it on that first loop of the pendant, and then I'm going to close the jump ring the same way I opened it with a little twisting and you're going to want to make sure that those ends are nice and flush next to each other. And you're just going to repeat that for all of the chain dangles on your pendant. Add the oval link, add it to the pendant, close the jump ring. Once your ends are glued onto your tubular parity stitch rope and you've got your chain dangles attached to your crescent pendant, you're going to want to use those two bigger 12 millimeter jump rings to attach your pendant to your rope. So you just take your jump ring, add it to the top loop of your pendant, add the rope, and then close the jump ring. Again, making sure that it is flush when you close it. And then repeat for the other side of the pendant. Add the jump ring to the loop of the pendant, add it to the rope. Alternatively, before gluing on the ends of your rope, you could add the jump rings to the pendant, close them, and then slide them onto your um, rope and then add the cord ends. Um, that's just a different way to do it, but it works either way. Just depends on what order you want to assemble your necklace. And then after that, all you have to do is attach your chosen toggle clasp to the loop on your ends using a jump ring. Um, we use two jump rings linked together here. You can use one, two, or more if you want to add more length, but you're done bead weaving. Um, two jump rings on this and make it easy to bring that toggle bar through. Then once you have your clasp added, you're done and you have this beautiful tubular peony stitch necklace. So that is how you make our Mojave rain necklace. Thanks for watching and I hope this helps you make the beautiful Mojave Rain necklace. Make sure to leave a like and a comment if you enjoyed this video and make sure to subscribe to our channel so you're the first to know when our next video comes out. Bye!